Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Shadow and Sun Show. Today, we are, uh, we're doing this again. That's right, folks. Welcome back to another Tuesday Treasure Chest. In here is an old, old favorite. We told you a little bit about it. Which, uh, he is, uh, considering, let's just say, um, buying. Never mind. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, um... That, that's that's another story for another time, but... Or at least he was. I don't think he is. Yeah, it, it, it's it's still in the works. Yeah. Anyways. Pop it open and let's show everybody what we got to show off. That's right, folks. Galacta 25. Flip it over because it's sideways. As you, as you can see, it's still sealed in its original packaging from 1981 or 2 or something like that. It was more or less a miniature war game based clearly off of the Star Wars franchise back in the day, including stormtroopers and rebel heroes and sorcerer knights that were suspiciously... Uh, like Darth Vader and, and characters like that. But it also had some original characters of its own, including some things that... The the squogs, which I think were supposed to be like squirrels or dog people or or some sort of fuzzy Ewok little critters. And, yeah. of course, our favorites, the octopoids. Oh, yes, yeah, those. Which were an absolutely ingenious little... Uh, uh, alien race that we would fight against. Little guy and I played a, a bunch of games of this back in the day. Yes. And it, it also. Uh, yeah, we'll get there. It's a twenty-five millimeter scale game. The miniatures are still available as recasts, and if you're interested, uh, you know, hit me up in the chat section, and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. Believe it or not, they still play this game uh, in its newer form at the ReaperCon every year in Texas, and it, it, it later came out with a, a sort of revised edition, edition called Galacta 3, which we will talk about later on, but let's just real quick go over this box. It came with the rule set, set and a painting guide, along with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, like 14 miniatures like the, the famous monster set that I showed you guys last week. It also came with paint and a brush, and seeing as how it's still sealed in the box, everything should probably still be good, but I'm never going to open it up because I have extra rules, extra miniatures. Yeah. Uh, I've got scores of these miniatures in recast, and some still original lead. Some are in my eBay store, and it came in two different box sets. The other box set I'll show you in just a moment. But I really fell in love with this set uh, as a kid. It was one of the first games I played uh, with my friends. And it I, I really loved the cover, the uh, the homemade terrain. They really did a, a pretty nifty job of coming up with this little diorama scene. And we would use all kinds of different things for, for terrain. Everything from paper cups to Legos and build you know, different, uh, you know, battlefields. And we played this game over and over again. And the little guy and I are looking forward to playing this game again real One soon. Day. Now, here's the other box set that I have. And I'm not going to open it up because it's pretty beat up. But it was the Star Commandos. And it actually had the, the Darth Vader sort of character and a Luke Skywalker and another... Rebel assault leader that was supposed to be the Princess Leia, some stormtroopers and a couple of rebel troops. It was the cheaper version. It was a paint and play set. It had the instructions, the the painting guide, and the paints. But this set, I know, as a kid, came out at fourteen dollars, while the larger set was twenty dollars. And I'm not. Sh I'm pretty sure I got the Star Commandos first, but I could be wrong. But I, I, it, it didn't take me long to get both sets complete. Now, in addition to having these, I also have... Why don't you break out the 
slide over the packs. I have a complete set of the entire line of Galacta miniatures that came out in, oh, excuse me guys, in blister packs. And they're all sealed and in pretty damn good condition considering as old as they are. Yeah. And there were, I believe, 12 different blister packs that basically made up the entire collection of all the different characters and trooper types that include uh, one of my favorite sets that I'll get to in a second, but it had robots and androids, aliens, shock troopers for the Empire. Oh, I have two packs of shock troopers. I didn't realize that. Hmm. Also, yes, the names are straight and just ripped from Star Wars. Yeah. Stormtroopers, planetary strikers, octopoids. And this set, this pack here, I kept because it actually came with an extra octopoid. Normally they only came with three. But that one came with four. And it also came with you one of... it over again. With a, a, a section leader, which was only supposed to appear in the box set, which is the, the smaller so of the two octopoids. bizarre pack. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty rare. Um, it's not such a big deal now because you can get them recast. And in, but, I mean, the fact that this existed... Right. It was weird. And, and these blister packs back in the day were three ninety five each. There's the villains blister pack and female adventurers, interstellar heroes. But this was one of my favorite packs right here. And it's going to be hard for you to see. But it came with this little grab scooter miniature. It was just a lot of fun because you could put just about any miniature yeah, on it. Yeah, I like that one. And and then it would give them a, a bonus movement rate. Even though it looks like it has a gun, it, it wasn't armed in the game. But this thing right down here, for those of you who, who remember, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, just, you know, being able to tool around with that. You know, whoever got to it first would then suddenly get a a bonus movement and the rules allowed you to customize each and every miniature in the game give them different weapons and, and equipment and things like that but each of these blister packs now sell for about 50 bucks a piece on eBay when you can find 50? them between 35 and 50 depending on the time of year and I've had these for a very long time I've bought and sold back and forth to get packages in the best condition as possible so uh, there, I haven't had all these packs since I was a kid but I do have a lot of miniatures from when I was 14, 15, 16 years old and then 1980s came along and the company Heritage Miniatures went out of business and then they were completely off the market you couldn't find them and it wasn't until 25 plus years later I remembered that you know hey I wonder what happened to that game I went looking around on eBay and slowly built back up this small collection and got to meet the people involved uh, Jim Wobbler and, and uh, uh, who was the other guy uh, not Eric Carb and also a friend of mine who owns uh, the miniature mold so he helps you know pump them out and I'll hook you guys up with with that if you're interested but we had a lot of fun playing this game and yeah we're hoping to play it again uh, with with brand new painted miniatures I'm gonna try to get him to help me paint up some 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 yeah. units if so you remember from a long long time ago when we did one of our sci-fi months these little <clears throat> drone things were UFOs. Yes, that's we right. We just spray, we sprayed them chrome, add some green, uh, whatever it's called, green neon, neon paint. paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a lot of fun uh, using them, uh, and a lot of these miniatures, especially the robots and the octopoids, work well with with uh, twenty eight millimeter scale. Specifically, but, the octopoids, which right, are right, and, and even the the the, the sauroid. Lizard guys, they they work well. They're they're a little, they end up being a little bit smaller, a little bit taller than twenty eight millimeter miniatures. Right. But everything else is really really small, 
in comparison to your 28 the millimeter miniatures. They the just drones, as previously mentioned, work perfectly for space games. And mm -hmm. I mean, just as their size now, they work perfectly for what they were already meant to be. Right, just robots. Yeah. And though, of course, most of the character miniatures tiny. They're really, really very small. Very, very tiny. Um, I'll try to break some out again. Uh, we did a paint when we did the paint. Uh, the metallic paint set, we painted up a bunch of these with those metallic uh, army painter paints. Really? Remember when the new set came out? Oh, yes. So you can check out the size uh, comparison and, and some better shots and yeah. uh, visuals of the Galacta miniatures. And later on down the road, we'll talk about the Galacta 3 miniature game that came out about 15 years ago when they tried to revive it. And photographs I took of this game are on the... Dwarven Forge uh, photo section under Galacta Revival and they liked my pictures and paint jobs so much that they uh, kept it for their sci-fi uh, Dwarven Forge sets which there's only like four or five sets but we did a really nice display of all the Galacta miniatures and some of the Galacta miniatures incorporated old archive miniatures that they did for the Galacta 3 set so if you've got you know, Galacta 3 miniatures, or you've got the old Star Wars archive sci-fi miniatures. Those Mouse stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the Star Rovers line, and the Rat R2-T2, and, Which is the, and greatest the Samurai thing. Vader. All fantastic things. Some of the greatest, some of the greatest things ever witnessed mm -hmm. yeah. by human imagination. And, and of course I have all those, and, and maybe we'll break those out for another Treasure Chest video. But maybe. we told you guys we'd show you our Galacta collection last week, so... That we did. So we brought it I out. I think we did, I don't remember. And uh, later on, I'll show you my Galacta 3 collection, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait a while we'll until after Christmas we so we can, you know, actually play some more games and, yeah. and see it how... It has been a while. Yeah. We did create this weird campaign system, which we never finished yeah, or did was, anything with. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, and the, the, the game rules are really simple. Probably the simplest game rules ever... When it comes to miniature games, it's like two to three pages with pictures. So, I mean, it could probably be boiled down to, you know, a couple of pages. Galacta 3 is a little bit more complicated, but not by much. But like I said, the best thing about it is you could build up each and every miniature through a point system and equip them however you want and group them into squads or heroes. And, and it was just a, it's just a lot of fun. And it's... One of the ways I got my start into miniature gaming back in the early, early 80s. So we uh, we hope you guys enjoy it. And if any of you guys actually remember this or played it, you know, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section so we can reminisce about this this crazy old silly Star Wars ripoff game that was... Because that's very much what it was. Oh yeah, absolutely. It and was, had, it's great. Yeah. I'm not going to say it was great, it still is great. And, and had they stayed in business, they would have most likely been sued out of existence a hundred percent there's no way this could have survived it's like there's no universe where this lasted that much longer yeah, yeah. it was it was short they went out of business and if they didn't go out of business then they would have been driven out of business and into bankruptcy yeah they would uh they're lucky that uh they died then and not well no later. because they did make some other great stuff but this uh, would have been the nail in the coffin had they survived oh no yeah they're lucky that this died when it did, because it would have destroyed everything else, mm -hmm. because of, you know, copyright laws. Yeah. Yeah. But there you have it, it folks. It was still very good. I what? hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll just punch you in the leg because it's there. Um, thanks for for hanging out with us for a few minutes. Uh, we'll let you get back to your regularly uh, scheduled broadcasting, whatever you guys doing on yes. a Tuesday night. Um, again, thanks for sticking in and st stopping by. I should say. And uh, hanging out with us, we uh, <laughs> we really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to playing this game. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. We had a dog quake. Um, yeah. But we'll see you guys real soon. And, hey, hey. Oh, yes. Good night. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Distracted, huh?